This watch has an LED readout. LED, light emitting diode. The diode is, is a very interesting circuit component. The symbol for a diode looks like a, a triangle pointing at a vertical bar and then the wire leads coming out on either side. And then oftentimes, if it's an LED, a light emitting diode, then we'll have little arrows going off showing that there's photons being emitted. And that's what we have here. Now, a diode has two electrical properties. And these are rather fascinating when you think about it. And this drawing of the diode helps you remember what those two properties are. So, to think about these properties, I want you to think of a, a door in, say, a department store, or any store for that matter, and it's got a sign on it, and it's got a handle, and you walk up to this door, and what do you notice right away is that the door only opens in one direction. I'm sure you've never done this. Um, I have go up to a door and I'm pulling and pulling and pulling and nothing's happening and the sign says push. You're much smarter than I am so I'm, I'm sure you've never been embarrassed like that. Um, but that's one job of a diode. It's to allow current through the diode but only in one direction. Any current that tries to come from the other direction is denied. So this circuit, so this circuit drawing of a diode has this vertical bar right here, any current trying to go this way gets blocked by the diode. Current traveling this way is allowed to go through under one condition. Go back to the store with that door and you walk up to it and let's say it's a push, okay? So you're allowed to go through that way and you're, you're, you're gonna push so it's the right direction. Now you have a small child with you and and they run ahead and, and they push on the door and if they're really small, what happens? Nothing. They, they push and they push and nothing happens. And then you come along and you push on the door and it opens and the child looks up at you with awe. Here's this superhuman strength that could open this door that I couldn't open. Do you remember those days when you were so amazed at the strength of adults? So that's the second job of a diode. It's, it's to say, okay, current, you can go through this direction, but only if what? If the voltage is above a certain point. We call that the voltage threshold, okay? So as long as the voltage potential is above a certain value, then it will allow current through. If the voltage potential is less than that value, then no current will get through in the correct direction. It'll be held. Interesting. Can you think of where there might be diodes um, that you've used and didn't know about it? Well, we just showed one with a clock, a light emitting diode. And in fact, uh, some real nice high-end large HD TVs are made with light emitting diodes and they use a lot less energy. Um, I've got this flashlight here, it's, it's pretty bright. Um, ooh, boy, and that, that's just one little LED. It's, it's a light emitting diode and some great lenses in here. And that diode does not take a lot of energy, so uh, the batteries last pretty well and the light bulb itself doesn't wear down like an incandescent, um, a tungsten light bulb. The LED can burn and burn and burn for a long, long, long time. I think it's kind of funny how manufacturers give the number of hours that a diode's going to burn um, because they haven't been in business long enough to actually test that uh, because the, the theoretical value is much longer, far longer than an incandescent. Um, so that, that's one benefit, and you've seen that with diodes. There's another place that a diode is used, and it's for the direction property. Uh, that is in cars. How many of you have had an alternator that went out? Um, it would no longer charge the battery. And it's most likely that the alternator is still spinning and that the alternator is actually producing electricity. Oftentimes what happens is there is a diode inside that alternator and it's keeping charge 
from flowing out of the battery. Okay, it keeps the charge from leaking out of the battery. That diode is there and eventually that diode breaks. And so your alternator becomes a drain for the battery. Now, unfortunately, that diode is probably a 50 cent part. And if you've ever had your alternator replaced in your car, it's probably around, I don't know, what, four or six hundred dollars. Um, there's, there are some smart, um, I think they're German made cars where the diode is not embedded inside the alternator that you actually have to replace the whole thing. Instead, you can just reach down in the engine and pull the diode off the outside of the alternator and just replace the diode. But like I said, it's on a high-end German car and so that diode is probably $600. <laughs> you know how that works. So what should this plot look like? And by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, for the diode, we're not plotting voltage versus current. Okay, we're plotting current versus voltage. Why? Just to, to highlight the importance of that threshold voltage. Oh, but first let's look at the symbol again. If I'm coming from this direction, that vertical bar says no wrong current direction. I have to come from this side. But this triangle here means that if I exceed the certain voltage potential, it will allow the current flow. A, I, I like that diagram because it's so instructive to remind me of the, the two properties of a diode, a voltage threshold and a current direction limiter. So if we were to plot a diode where voltage is on the X and current is on the Y, if we do not exceed the voltage threshold, so let's put our voltage threshold right here and here. Don't know if that will show up any better or worse. There's my voltage threshold. If I don't pass that voltage threshold, then I cannot have current flow. So, I, so if I don't pass that voltage threshold, I cannot have current flow. Wait a minute. I just said no current flow. What other component did we see that with? Oh, it was the capacitor. And what did we say about the resistance of a capacitor? We couldn't say anything, could we? Because it was not defined. So as long as my voltage is oscillating, if it's less than the threshold voltage, I'm not going to have any current. But if I exceed the threshold, then I'm going to have current flow. And when I come this way, it'll be down like that. Now, what does the slope of this represent? Remember what we're plotting. We're not plotting voltage versus current. We're plotting current versus voltage. So the slope is not resistance, but it's the inverse of the resistance. So on this plot, I want you to find, first of all, what's the threshold? And then what's the resistance? Now there's a couple things you need to think about. The threshold here and here are going to be different. Why? Well, it just so happens that we have a very special diode on your circuit board. It's a bidirectional diode system. There's actually two diodes in there. One of them's red and the other one's green. And so you need to note on your plot which line represents the red light and which line represents the green light. So you remember the current is alternating. It's going one way and then it's going the other way. And so when the current is going this way, it'll go through the, say, the red diode. And yet when the current is going this way, it's going to go through the green diode. Okay, so one of these is red and the other one's green we would not expect the thresholds to be identical. We'd expect them to be close if the diodes were made similarly, but they're different diodes. So find the threshold value for each one. One's positive and one's negative, but the absolute value's gonna be different also. The second thing you have to consider is that normally when you use a diode, you always have a, normally and always, um, a resistor in series with the diode. Go ahead and look at your circuit board and you'll see that there's a 150 ohm resistor in series with the diode. And that's so that there's a voltage drop across the, across the resistor allowing the diode to be protected. If you have too much voltage drop across a diode, you will blow out the diode and it'll, it'll burn up and won't work anymore. So when you find this 
inverse slope, find the slope and invert it, you need to subtract 150 ohms from that value to find the resistance of the diode itself. And this diode right here will have a different resistance value. Um, these two values will probably vary more percentage-wise than the two thresholds. So remember that the diode has two properties. One is a, is a direction limiter. It only allows current in one direction, not the other. And also remember that it has a voltage threshold, that in the allowable direction, you have to exceed the voltage threshold in order for the current to flow. In your analysis, again, it should look something like this, where you're highlighting, for me, the green was down here and the red was up there, and I pointed out where the thresholds were and what those values were, and I also showed the mathematics to find the resistance here and the resistance here, okay, inverting the slope and then subtracting 150 ohms from that to give me the resistance of the diode.